Hey everybody, I'm next to a creek here in town and people noticed this year that this creek is really, really green. There's a lot of algae, there's a lot of scum kind of floating on top. Uh, there's still cool things happening because there's a turtle and a frog just right beside me a minute ago. Uh, but it is really, really green. Uh, so they were wondering what is the cause of this? Now I called the NPCA, Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority, since they're the ones that look after Oh, that's so weird. That's a frog really loud right beside me. Um, they're the ones that look after waterways in Niagara. And they actually do testing. They do regular water testing in almost every creek in Niagara because they want to make sure there's no uh, serious contaminants that are being dumped into the water. And they keep an eye on uh, water health in the region. And what they said was there's an unusually high level of phosphates uh, and E. coli uh, in this uh, creek. And that happens almost every year this time of year. Uh, e. coli is a bacteria associated with a lot of, uh, well, manure. And uh, phosphates comes along with that. Phosphates is, is a nutrient that uh, plants love to eat. And what happens in the spring is you get fertilizer, you get manure spread on the uh, farmland in the area. You even get uh, some residents fertilizing their lawn. Now, all of that stuff runs off into the creek and the plants in the creek take off. Uh, that asso associated with, uh, with hot weather, with sunlight, and not a lot of rain this spring, and we end up with a creek that looks like that. So we get this huge algae bloom, uh, this bright green color, and that algae is fed from all those phosphates, uh, that manure, the fertilizer that's run off into the creek. Now, uh, some people think this looks kind of cool, uh, and it actually produces a lot of oxygen in the water for a short time. So during the day when the sun is shining, you get high uh, oxygen levels because of all those green plants photosynthesizing. Uh, at night, however, they uh, respire. They consume the energy that they've produced and they produce CO2. They consume the oxygen. So you almost get a river that's breathing. It produces oxygen during the day, uh, which fish uh, can breathe from and then at night it consumes that oxygen because there's so many plants oh. Another thing that can happen is those plants can die. So eventually uh, that algae reach, reaches the end of its life and um, and It dies later in the summer and you get a, uh, a, a Black Creek so you get a kind of a rotting stinky Creek that process has a name and it's called eutrophication so two big words today uh, eutrophication is the process of excess nutrients in a swamp-like aquatic environment. The other end of that spectrum is um, oligotrophic. So if a uh, lake or a stream is clear, uh, doesn't have many plants, it's called oligotrophic. So think O for open water, stuff you'd want to swim in, and think U or eutrophic for a swampy green water. So two ends of the spectrum in aquatic environments. Eutrophic being like you and oligotrophic, open water, okay? Open water meaning low nutrients and uh, you know, a beautiful lake that you'd wanna jump into like up in Muskoka. Now there's piles of life going on. Like I just had a really loud frog uh, and a turtle poked its head up a minute ago. But the problem can be that uh, all those plants are going to consume oxygen uh, later when they die uh, and that's going to turn into a swamp here okay so nature has a way of absorbing nutrients if you dump nutrients into it the plants will take that up they'll absorb it all and it's trying to reach a balance a new balance okay and this is what you get you get that bright green uh, swampy feel that you really don't want to swim in or even wade into um, unless you're very brave i guess i'm not right now Okay, so my question for you is, uh, the NPCA is trying to um, collect data and ultimately they're trying to repair uh, the damage that's been done to uh, some of these watersheds. What are some things do you think that can be done uh, to repair the eutrophication? So how can we undo eutrophication? How can we clarify a stream that's been turned into a swamp like that? Um, so what are some things that can be done to, to oligify, I'm not sure if that's a word, to make it oligotrophic again, to go to the other end of the spectrum, to clarify water. Okay, so um, 
you can just brainstorm and come up with some thoughts or you can actually do some research and, uh, and look up how can you undo eutrophication. There's your question for today. All right, have a good day.